Here we go. We said the last time that the theme for level 4 is eternal recurrence. It is said that this term was created by the philosopher Nietzsche. Ordinary people think that a given incident happens only once. Well, of course, once something happens, it can't be walked back. However, according to Nietzsche, superhumans or people with superhuman ideas can repeat any moment eternally. So you often hear people say that when you experience the same thing over and over again, you're trapped in the same cycle and humans must break free of that cycle. But the superhumans that Nietzsche talks about are different. According to Nietzsche, superhumans don't try to escape the cycle. They accept their past, their choices, everything that they did, instead of denying them. Ordinary people often try to get away from the cycle, but the superhuman does not. Superhumans return to the same spot over and over again, relive the same experience over and over again inside their heads. In this storyboard, the part where the song is repeated, there's a note, eternal recurrent scene. So, Miyazaki intentionally uses this term. Of course he knows Nietzsche's term because he's a very educated man. So, why did he write eternal recurrence? When you think about it, this story is the opposite of eternal recurrence. Every time the song repeats, it changes slightly, just like I explained in level 1. In level 1, when something goes wrong, they try to do it again and again. They never give up. And after all that work, they finally release the angel into the sky. But Miyazaki tries to depict eternal recurrence here. He's saying yes to the repetition in life. Now, now, first of all, I'd like to go back to what we briefly talked about in layer 2. Look at these two scenes. Here. I'll use this panel a lot in layer 4. The guy on the left is the hacker, Asuka, trying to acquire some map or something online in order to save the girl. The guy on the right is Chage. He's soldering something, assembling some electronic parts. In these two cuts, they're preparing for the counterattack. But there's something unnatural about them. Like I said before, take a look at this thing in the center. In the pub scene, you see a sign that says salted mackerel synthetic and bio vinegared octopus. This means that at this point, the earth is already contaminated by radioactivity and there are no living creatures anymore. So why the flowers and the wine? That's what we talked about in the last segment. Moreover, how could they receive so many fan letters if they are policemen who kill so many people? So right here in the bouquet of flowers, you see a card, which is a fan letter. There's lots of gifts tied with ribbons, and also on Chage's cut, you'll see wrapped gifts with ribbons. This one on the left. So why are they drinking endlessly in a cheap pub like that, if they can get expensive wines and wrap presents from their fans for free? First, we'll... Take a closer look at this cut with Chage. So you can see gifts on your right side. If you look on your left, it's hard to see, but you would see it more clearly if you were watching this in a cinema or a concert hall. It's hard to see just looking at the video, so I edited the cut like this. I adjusted the brightness and strengthened the contrast. When you look more closely, you'll see something behind Chage's left shoulder. It's a guitar. 
There's a guitar behind him. Maybe some of you would think, ah, because Chaga and Asuka are rock stars, he drew the guitar just for fun. But Miyazaki hates doing things for fun. He gets upset if an animator does that. He doesn't allow anything meaningless inside the frame. So, if you see something on the screen, that's because Miyazaki intended it. Like I said earlier, you see wine and presents, just like how the ones you saw in Asuka's cut. And it says Chage on his cup. If you look at Asuka's cut, you'll know what this means. There's lots of gifts, flowers, and expensive alcohol. In this scene, he's not a cop anymore. He's more like... Asuka disguised as a cop, so to speak. It's like a dream. As I explained in layer 3, it is an imaginary world, but it is being invaded by the real, everyday life of Chage and Asuka, the musicians. It's not just an ordinary music video, but rather the real Chage and Asuka take over the characters in the story played by themselves. If you look more closely at the beginning of this scene, where the camera looks into Asuka's room through a round window, this round window is used in films. It's called Iris In, Iris Out. Iris In is when a circle in the center widens to start the next scene. Whereas Iris Out is when a black circle narrows in from the outside towards the center until the screen turns totally black. This technique is often used to remind the audience that they are now looking at an imaginary world. To stress that this is only a made-up story, a piece of fiction, that's when they use Iris In, Iris Out. It's only a round window after all, so you might not need to think too deeply about it, but he uses this composition intentionally. Between layer 1 and layer 3, he repeatedly explains that this is the real protagonist, this is the real Chage and Asuka. For instance, he depicts Asuka dying on the street from radiation sickness despite having had the chance to release the angel to the sky. In another scene, the three fall from the truck unable to release her. And there's also a scene where they recapture the angel but find out that she's already dead. In the pub scene, they fantasize recapturing the angel over and over again. In layer 3, I also talked about Chage and Asuka as professional killers who murder people repeatedly even without the existence of the angel. Finally, there's also a scene where he shows Chage and Asuka as nuclear plant workers. They're not even cops. So in layer 4, we'll dig deeper and think about who Chage and Asuka really are, which is the real story. And of course, Chage and Asuka are J-pop stars. They're J-pop stars and rock stars, but in the video, they're pretending to be low-ranking cops, poor, troubled, discontented young men. I wouldn't say they're liars, but they're just artists after all. It's not just Chaga and Asuka. All stars and artists are like that. Even the comedians are like that. Comedians earning 10 to 20 million yen per year complain about not getting reimbursed for their transportation costs by the company. And I'm going, ah, what are you complaining about? Superstars sometimes show off their ordinariness, but artists basically, no matter how successful they are, sing about the days when they were poor and about their memories of heartbreak. And that's why the fans love them so much. Chage and Asuka, who earn a hundred times more than the average citizen, asked Miyazaki to create a video for their concert. 
Ghibli first says it costs 25 million yen, which they accept. But then Ghibli says, oh, it's 50 million yen. And they say, that's no problem at all. That's how well off they are. But the song goes, on your mark, so de demo, Bokura ga yame na i no wa, Yume no shamen me gakete, Ike so una kiga suru kara. So they're singing as if they're not well off, as if they aren't satisfied with their own lives. So, when you translate this structure into an animation piece, it looks like this Asuka, who gets lots of gifts and fan letters looks so relaxed when he's hacking. This is a serious scene, so he should look more serious. He's trying to save a girl's life, so his expression should be more desperate. But Miyazaki makes him lean back. He even has a cigarette in his hand, and his eyes are so relaxed. So the way he depicts Asuka is so malicious. Miyazaki portrays him in a rather demeaning light, looking at the screen completely relaxed, surrounded by presents and bottles of alcohol and fan letters. Moreover, uh, in this cut, if you look inside the circle, because it's so small inside the circle, you can see that the flowers are even more emphasized, because it's placed in front. And you can see the gifts clearly on the right. You can also see something strange on top of the computer monitor. This strange thing on top is... You can see it more clearly if you look at this panel here. You see? It's a rabbit doll wearing a red shirt. It's strange. It sits in a peculiar way, but he doesn't explain what it is. This rabbit looks straight at Asuka, but Asuka's looking at the screen, so their eyes don't meet. Asuka isn't looking at the rabbit. I did some research on what rabbits represent. In Christianity, rabbits wearing red clothes are associated with Easter. The red represents the blood of Christ. On Easter, people play this game at events where somebody plays a judge and determines whether a child is good or not. You know, he hunts for bad children. And that judge is described as a rabbit wearing a red shirt. But this is different. So it's not a symbol of Christianity or anything. The message is more simple. Otherwise, he wouldn't have placed it there in the center. In English, the rabbit is a symbol of health and youth. And in general, a rabbit wearing red clothes symbolizes a young girl. So it's very simple. That means it's a female. This rabbit is a metaphor for Chage and Asuka's female fans, specifically Asuka's female fans. It's a female fan watching the two singers at a concert. I think that's what it means. The rabbit is staring at Asuka by sitting right in front of him. It's just like the tens of thousands of girls at a concert looking straight at Asuka. But the reason why Asuka is busy looking at the screen is because he's forgotten the existence of the rabbit. Their eyes don't meet because he's completely focused on what he's doing. So like I said before, the singer, the artist, Chage and Asuka's real life start to invade the story bit by bit. Now, why did Miyazaki do such a thing? This is where they save the girl. You see all these lasers moving around them. This too. When you look at the storyboard, it says lasers are everywhere and it is like a concert hall. Now look at this scene. To Miyazaki, these are not real laser sensors. Well, of course, it's a scene where they try to break through the sensors, but at the same time, this video was intended to be screened at the concert hall, at the actual venue where their concert is going to be held. 
so Miyazaki always had this in mind while making it. This concert was brilliant. You see Chage and Asuka singing in front of you, and you see this video on the back screen. This was in the 90s, when lasers were very popular among the J-pop artists, and it would have been impressive. The reason why he included this scene is obviously because he wanted to create a concert atmosphere. This might sound a bit mean, but these J-pop stars are pretending to be poor young men and uh, making up a story. While in reality, they're celebrities who are getting all these gifts and letters from their fans. But Miyazaki is not a low-level person who criticizes people like that. So he's not mocking Chage and Asuka. For example, the pig in Porco Rosso and Kamaji in Spirited Away are both his alter egos. He even depicts himself in a mocking way, so he's not attacking them by saying, You spoiled brats! He's trying to show a deceptive aspect to artists such as singers or filmmakers. Creators always produce the image that is most favorable for them. No matter how privileged they are, they portray an image that will invite the most sympathy from the audience. They create an innocent main character and make them out to be a version of themselves. And it makes them happy when the audience can relate. So, this piece, On Your Mark, was originally released together with the animation Whisper of the Heart. In Whisper of the Heart, Miyazaki includes an old man character whom Shizuku, the main character, gets to know. He doesn't flirt with her, but the old guy is a bit too close to her. He looks almost like a dirty old man, but this is Miyazaki's alter ego as well. This is his fantasy. He wants to be this old man whom the girl relies on. He wants her to tell him that she feels safe when he's around. So his desire pours into his own work. It really pours. But he's totally aware of what he's doing. He's aware that he's injecting his own desires into the characters. He thinks it's a bit disgraceful. That's why he always runs away and is so reluctant to talk when he's asked about his own works. Maybe those of you who've written free novels online might understand this feeling. When I see a piece like On Your Mark, where there's so many layers, I automatically think, What's in the deepest lair? I tend to think that the truth lies in the deepest lair. But for the filmmakers, the deepest lair is not where the truth lies. The truth is not the one that they want to hide the most. When they're drawing up a story, or when singers are writing lyrics, they are just picking out the best among the infinite number of options. It could be this, it could be that. There's tons of options. The filmmakers simply link together what they've chosen. That's how they create. So they think of happy endings and bad endings. They think of various options. As the filmmakers construct a story, they gradually fall in love with every character, so they don't want their characters to go through any pain, and they end up rewarding them with a kind of lukewarm happiness. But then they realize, I can't do that for everyone, sorry, but you must experience pain, and that's how they connect the story. They rack their brains for different options and they eventually decide on the most optimal flow. A flow that from beginning to end will rock the audience dramatically and frantically from scene to scene. They have the audience at their mercy so that the audience is thrilled and moved. It's like rowing a boat down the river. First the current is rapid, then it's suddenly slow in a beautiful landscape, then it's fast again. 
This is how filmmakers create a flow in the story. This is called a butterfly's dream. You don't know whether your dream is about you turning into a butterfly or the butterfly being you. And this is not a trick to confuse reality or to hide the reality. Whatever the dream is, you accept it as a reality. That is Miyazaki's version of eternal recurrence. The reason why he uses the term eternal recurrence in the storyboard is not to pin down a single truth. Whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending, he asks you to accept it as the reality. To be honest, the film is in fact a criticism of Mamoru Oshii, the maker of Ghost in the Shell, and Beautiful Dreamer. Oshii basically makes full use of the fictionality of film. He likes stories that cannot draw a clear line between fiction and reality. A cyborg appears in Ghost in the Shell, but it's hard to tell who's the real human being. So Miyazaki is retaliating. By saying, this is what you call a dream within a dream, you idiot. It's a strong message. Oshi usually criticizes all of Miyazaki's films, but he never ever criticized On Your Mark. He stayed completely silent. I did some thorough research on this, so if you find any interview where Oshi talks about On Your Mark, please let me know. I couldn't find any, so I assumed there was nothing he could say about it. So the mystery of Layer 4 is that everything exists equally at the same time. Essentially, the musicians Chage and Asuka exist in this film. These rich musicians who commissioned Hayao Miyazaki to make a video that makes them look cool exist, Chage and Asuka, the power plant workers, who have no choice but to fantasize another life, exist, Chage and Asuka, the cops, exist, Chage and Asuka, who risk their lives to save the angel, Chage and Asuka, who can only ever drink, exist, it's the same as turn a Gundam author Yoshiyuki Tomino's theory, total affirmation, this piece embodies total affirmation. So, there is no truth. The thing that animation directors or film directors have the hardest time answering is, what did you really want to say in this film? Some say they already said all the things that they wanted to say in the film, but in reality, everything exists in parallel. Every possibility exists. But because the film couldn't be more than two hours long, they had to make each scene as short as possible. But if they could have added 15 more minutes, or if it didn't rain on that day, or if the sun had come out at the right time, there are so many ifs. Even with all these ifs, the final creation is still a correct answer. It's hard to understand the psychology of a filmmaker. It's hard for me to explain a piece like On Your Mark. But for Miyazaki, Chage and Asuka are also his alter egos. Chage and Asuka are characters in his story after all. For instance, Ashitaka and Naushika, and even Satsuki and Mei in My Neighbor Totoro, are all his alter egos. Miyazaki says Satsuki and Mei still live inside him and they are now middle-aged women. Miyazaki has created a few hundred personas in his animations. These few hundred characters are still living in him and they age with him. That is, for him, the eternal recurrence. I think many artists go through the same process as Miyazaki. However, Miyazaki has more of the tendency than any of the others. Every artist does that. So like Reiji Matsumoto, they want to include various characters in the same story. This is common to almost all artists who tell stories. They are constantly thinking, what happens if this character and this character live in the same story? Even if they don't exist in the same story, they still live inside the artist. But Miyazaki's characters, 
are more real than anybody else's. The reality within the characters is stronger than any other I know. Miyazaki locks up all his personas inside him. He is, in a way, a dictator. Because if he doesn't lock them up, they'll just keep coming out, and there will be chaos. The film definitely would not end within two hours, and Naushika in particular would never come to an end. It's because of how he creates the characters. So... In On Your Mark, why does the protagonist attempt the same thing over and over again? What is eternal recurrence? In Layer 4, he's trying to say that artists are all like that. There are lots of forks in the road within the piece. It's not a parallel world that actually exists. It's more like the world that exists inside Miyazaki's mind. Usually, a filmmaker chooses only one option to create a story, but this time he mixes them and puts them all out there. For him, it's an experiment. When he worked with Toei Animations, he was told not to do that. So he was curious and wanted to know what would happen. It's a personal experiment for him. That's why it's called Ghibli Experimental Theater. So that was layer 4. This is the end of the free part.